sees us, the real us, then they'll understand. They don't stop holding their noses long enough to listen. I want them to know the truth. What if they search Chris at the exit? Won't happen. Oh! Ooh, what'd you bribe the guards with, huh? Look, she got this in, didn't she? A lot of people don't think what happened to us is right. We've got friends here. What good's he gonna do anyway? And get your face out of the frame and go sulk on your cot for the next six years. It's another hit first. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Jana says we've only got 30 minutes max. Then shift change Big Bertha's on. Oh, friggin' mean bitch dyke. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Look, you, you gotta think of the headlines here. Condemned MPs blow the whistle. Are you fucking nuts blowing the whistle on the U.S. Army? Oh, I'm, I'm out of here. All right, all right, all right. Just, just what we know, what we saw. I mean, what it was like. Okay, but no, no, no head doctor crack, no fucking whining, no fucking at all, please. Quacks, just want to pump you full of drugs, you can't remember nothing. Yeah, but you know, you don't have to listen to yourself scream at night. I'll get over it. Yeah, right. Ready? Hi. First, we'll introduce ourselves. You may know us as privates, first class. <laughs> Last names withheld to protect the guilty. <laughs> Sandy's always kidding around. I'm Lynette. So I must be Sandy. She's from Michigan. <laughs> I'm from Ohio. Small town girls. And now sharing a cell together because... Hey, but don't worry, Mom. She lays a frickin' hand on me. I'll punch her lights out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Be nice, okay? Give them my wide, engaging smile. <laughs> the Detroit Free Press said so, so it's gotta be true. Cute. We may not sound as educated as some, but that's why we joined the reserves to further our education. I, I wanted to do phys ed to teach kids, disadvantaged kids. And I was a high school honor student. <laughs> Bet your mom's peeled that bumper sticker off. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> anyway, my dad was a police officer. Never told me your dad's a fucking cop. Do you want to like do this or not? So, my father is in the homicide division, or he was until recently. He used to bring home photos of crime scenes. With dead bodies on them? And he'd lay them out on the kitchen table. The dinner table? And me and my sisters, we'd, we'd analyze them, look for clues. Oh, we loved it. So I decided I wanted to go to college to study. Sandy? I never saw dead bodies before I got deployed. It's, it's different when you've seen them alive, sitting next to you in the mess tent. Two of our guys, their Humvee got blown to Bits. One of them was from Sandy's hometown. Freaking ragheads. We're not racist. It's, it's not an insult. It's just the way everybody talks. <laughs> yeah, Hodge, raghead, camel jockey. Doesn't mean nothing, does it? Like in boot camp, just before we deployed, our commander gave a speech. He said it, it was because of us that they got freedom now. And that we've got to make sure that the good team wins. And so like then he says that Let's get out there and burn some ragheads. <laughs> I mean, everybody laughed. The non-coms, everybody. It was a joke. And, but in those pictures, we weren't laughing in those pictures. Yes, we were, you dumbass. It was all misrepresented. Oh, those media bastards, they twist everything. What? 
people jumped to the wrong conclusions. To make the military police look bad. We were proud to be serving our country. Like our president said, you gotta support the troops. If they look bad, then all of America looks bad. Yeah, it gives aid and... and it, uh, what's it? To the enemy. Sucker. <laughs> you and me both. What? Looked at one way, we can see how you might find the picture shocking. <laughs> Us, like, smiling at all. But it wasn't that we thought it was funny. The guys, they're, they're always watching. Yeah, so you can't act soft. Waiting for you to turn girly and start crying. So you start joking around too, to prove you're as tough as they are. They like to think they are. No special treatment because you're female. Look, we're lucky to have jobs like this. Women couldn't do this before. All buddies together, apart from the assholes. So you have to join in, stick together. No one rats on their buddies. But what you saw, that's not the whole story. Like Private Conman testified, the only reason he put the dog leash around the detainee's shoulders was so he could assist him out of the cell. The only way to get the freaking guys out. But the leash slipped and ended up around his neck and... Click! Private Conrad asked me to film it so we could show it to the new recruits as a training video. If you couldn't call that cruel. Not compared to 9-11. What terrorists done to innocent Americans... And, and that detainee who was naked, standing on the box with those wires attached? We never did electric shocks. That's freaking cruel. Like those collars they put on dogs. We only attached those things to his things because they told us to. They said it softens him up. And he had a hood on. They all had hoods on. So they weren't humiliated by the photos. We never beat nobody. And all injuries got prompt medical treatment. I seen it done. That MP private, he stitched them up good as any medic. And, and the reason why they were naked was because you couldn't trust them with any clothes. Uh, they'd find some way to kill themselves. And us? Turn your back on the freaking... Their culture's different. Their religion? They're, they have different values. Screaming innocence one second, and then the next? <laughs> Which is why they had to be shackled to the ceiling. I mean, they were a danger to themselves and others. Military intelligence. MI's orders. Not from our CO. When they explained it, it, it made sense. If their hands were in front, they could use the cuffs as a weapon. So that's why they had to be like this. Or cuffed the lowest bar. But then they'd reach their hands out into the corridor and... It's creepy. Like they're trying to grab your boot or something. No. But, but no one jumped on their hands on our watch. <laughs> What now? <laughs> that picture of you standing next to that naked pile of hairy ass ragheads. And you're smiling. You're smiling like you're on your summer vacation. Look, they told me a joke and then they took the picture. It wasn't fair. <laughs> Everything was funny to you, wasn't it? You gotta laugh. I mean, if you don't laugh, what are you gonna do? But you're freaking this and you're freaking- I'm saying fucking, am I? What's fucking wrong with freaking? Look, you're turning off with all that bad language. And that's why you're talking like the fucking Queen of England? They won't even listen. They'll think you're guilty as charged. I'm taking a break. Smoke time. No! Look, we've only got ten minutes, all right? And then we better be packed up and tucked up. Keep your panties on. Look, do you want to do this or not? Let's tell them it wasn't us in the undies. You catch me putting my undies on the camel jockey's head. Look, not a word about the undies. Without... Mom would have a fit. Look, we've got to help them to understand. Do you think that anybody who hasn't been there is going to fucking understand? <sighs> now I fucking forgot where we were. God damn it. Not stomping on their fucking fingers. As far as we know, those things only happen in cell block 1A and 1B. Where the sick, the worst ones were kept. And the cells weren't all that bad. I mean, we lived in them too, to keep out of harm's way. That's why the CEO ordered it. So, those detainees were in the safest place in the entire prison. 
See, once or twice a week, the terrorists will fire mortars into the prison. So all the less important detainees were in tents around the buildings, and we were down in the cells. So it's the terrorists' own freaking buddies that are mostly taking the hits. Don't give a rat's ass about their buddies. So we were safe in those cells. But after a while, one of our own guys would start picking a fight for no reason. It's the pressure. Going stir crazy inside or getting blown to bits outside. Nobody talks about being afraid. You can't. Just follow orders. It was the military intelligence guys, the CIA, the civilian interrogators. I mean, it creeps. They all acted like, like, like they were in charge. Like we should be taking orders from them. Nobody told us different. They kept saying what a good job we were doing, how we were helping fight the war against terror. They said the prisoners were breaking real easy after we stressed them up a bit. Yeah, that they were getting all this information, like names of terrorists and stuff like that. People who hate us because we're free. Enemies of the new free Iraq. Told us we were real patriots. Once I was coming on watch and they were bringing one of those really important terrorists from the playing cards. Ace in the hole, we called him. We all felt real good that day. Winning the war for democracy. They put my picture up at the Walmart back home. Walmart's wall of honor. We knew we were doing the right thing. But then everything got turned around. Pointing the finger at us. But everybody knew. MP officers, everyone. We didn't know it was all going to blow up. <laughs> Hit the headlines. We didn't know it wasn't all right. You do what your buddies do, right? You stick by your buddies. That's what's so freaking great about the army. You're with the good guys. Though, some of them went too far with the pictures. Freaking screensavers. Another thing I didn't like was them bringing the dogs in. Over there, they don't look after dogs. All beat up and scrawny looking. It's cruel. Their culture's different. It's against their religion to touch them. Not human to treat dogs that way. Tell, tell them about the time with the dogs. No! If you won't, then I will. <laughs> Sometimes they'd bring in dogs. The detainees weren't used to them. They would use the dogs to help soften them up for interrogation. This one time... The handlers would signal to us to be quiet. Four of Four the prisoners were cuffed outside their cells in the corridor. The extremists. That's what the interrogators called them. Lynette. They only had these hoods on. And when it got quiet, you could see them tense up, listening. Then the handlers, real quiet, brought the dogs over. Two dogs, real well-trained, beautiful shepherds. They let them sniff this one prisoner. That's all you could hear. When he realized, he screamed. He tried to pull out his hands to cover himself. Blood running all down his wrists. Even the other one, the one who'd mouthed off with the big beard, got the shit scared right out of him. The dog must have thought the detainee was going to attack us. Dogs know. They know when someone wants to hurt you. They got like this sixth sense. The next thing we knew, the dog was on. It's not fair to give dogs a bad name. Had hold of his leg. They let him run loose on the streets. Nobody gives it. Nobody cares. I still don't think it was justified. I told the sergeant after. Yeah, but it wasn't official in writing, so it didn't count at my trial. <laughs> sure ain't heard of no leash laws in Iraq. Will you shut up about the dogs? The story gets out, so what do they do? They shoot the fucking dog for doing its duty? You call that fair? No more about the dogs, all right? You shot the handler. He's the one who fucked it up. <sighs> Look, we only have a couple minutes left, so let's just say what we've got to say. So, those photographs don't really give a fair picture. Do they, Sandy? We was always thinking about what was happening to our guys. Then it didn't seem like such a big deal. Our buddies getting blown to bits. We're shipped home crazy with bits missing. We're freaking plastic bag like garbage. Why do you have to remind them about that picture? Huh? The one with you posing with the body in the bag. Uh, 
There's a dead raghead here if you take his picture, he's fucking dead. You believe the interrogators? That it was an accident in the shower? Oh, sure. And it'll never, ever, ever happen again. <laughs> yeah. Not now that there's signs posted everywhere. No photographs. I'm sorry, but we do get upset knowing what our troops are going through and their families. <laughs> but don't believe all those stories. First of all, we never starve the detainees. We never deliberately starve them. Should give them army rations. That'd be torture for real. When the only thing you have to look forward to is mealtimes. It's the same filthy rat chow day after day. So, it's not the army's fault. It's the civilian contractors. And you've got to understand the frustration. It, it builds up and up, squeezing you. So you can understand how we felt when they said we'd be like going home for Thanksgiving. Woo! <laughs> Chris, my partner, was planning a big party. My mom, too, in the trailer. She made a banner. And my sister was coming from Detroit. Welcome home, my hero, Annette. And then the freaking orders came. Redeployed. She's saving it for later. Shit hit the fan then. Things got a lot worse after that, didn't they, Sandy? You look at these, the detainees, and you think, it's your freaking fault that I'm here. And I'm in this freaking hellhole. It doesn't sound very heroic, true, but by then, all we wanted was to get out of there in one piece. Jessica Lynch, that's my hero. They can't see you, Sandy. Bullet wounds, stab wounds, both legs broken. Kept fighting them off to the death. Fighting them till the death, the paper said. She's got her own website, www.jessicalynch.com. No way! No shit? <laughs> There's no way that story was made up. She can sleep good at night. Her conscience has got to be clear as crystal. I'd like to be a sports hero, something like that. Got six years instead. We're doing our duty. You get orders to do something, you do it. Dad was in the front row when I graduated. Dress uniform, smiling all over his face. Proud of his little Linny. Mm -hmm. And when I joined the reserves, he used to tease me. He's gonna save the world from evil in it. After a while out there, you, you start to think, what's the big deal? And so frickin' what? You get used to it. Even the screaming. And you can't let it get to you. And then, then in my trial, they, they bring up all this stuff about the Geneva Convention? Nobody ever told us about no freaking Geneva Convention. They're not prisoners of war. They told us that. So, formal rules don't apply. We always followed army regs. But then after the photos, they changed the rules. You think that's fair? Branded. We're just ordinary people. Nothing special. The folks back home, they believed in us. Protecting America, doing the good work. For you. What you sent us out there to do. Sizzle, sizzle. What would you have done? Hmm? Sandy's mom, if you're out there, please let her know where you moved to. No shit, turn oh, really? It kills her when the letters come back, please. Okay. Lenny's dad that she so freaking admires? If you don't have the guts to come and visit, you can write, can't you? Sandy, don't. Yeah, I'm saying please. Yeah, even Sandy says please. Dad. I'm really sorry. Truly, I am. It's just that out there, you're like in this nightmare. You taught me not to be scared, but it's always behind you, waiting to jump out. Boo! I'm real sorry I let you down. We did the good work. Mom, remember how you cried when I got deployed? Nights are the worst. I'll never forget that dress you made for me. For my first communion, shining white. Dad, remember how you said I look like your own little angel? I try to sleep with my eyes open so I can't see it. 
The church looked lovely. Candles, flowers everywhere, everyone dressed up. Close my eyes and it's the same freaking movie. We all went up to kneel at the altar rail. You playing, then replaying, then replaying. And the bishop gave me the wafer and the wine. I was so excited, I could hardly breathe. So hot, you could hardly breathe. It's July, midday, and the street, dust up your nose and in your lungs, men standing in the rubble, just staring. But I didn't mess up. He blessed me, I said my prayer, and got up. And this little kid, he can't be more than six, he comes up and throws this little rock at our Humvee. When I got back to the pew, Dad had tears in his eyes. And the driver, he goes nuts. He busts off the antenna and goes after the kid. I'd never seen him cry before. Beat the shit out of this little kid with the antenna. My sister, she was only six. I want to say stop, but nobody says nothing. She says to me in like this real loud whisper, Lenny, what does Jesus' blood taste like? The next week, we come on duty early on Sunday and there's blood up the shower walls. I went to confession every week. <laughs> Dad liked that. He was a good cop, straight as an arrow. <laughs> Makes me laugh, all the kid things I used to confess to. And there's this dead body in a bag under the urinals. Father, forgive me. Blood all over his head, dripped into the bag from his ears. For I have sinned. Only, why'd they have to tape his eyes shut? Dad, I just wanted to do my duty and get home. Home sweet home. Now there's, like, all these... Flash photos going off in my head. Back home in the trailer next door, they had this German shepherd. He seemed as big as a horse to me. But he was real gentle. I mean, he let me do anything. You don't want to close your eyes. He was chasing this squirrel across the road. I saw the truck go over him. And the bastard driver didn't even stop. First, it's completely white, this big hole in the prisoner's leg. Then suddenly, blood comes pouring out. And there's just like this red mess in the road. Beautiful black fur, it's all wet, it's all messed. Lump of meat. The dog brings it back to the handler, holding like this lump of meat in its mouth. Mom couldn't get me to stop crying. Doesn't look like anything to do with a man. I was 11 when the blood first came. Thought I was bleeding to death. <laughs> Drops it at the handler's feet. Puddle of blood on the floor. Trails of blood. Mom took me to Kmart to ladies wear. She let me pick out two new pairs of white panties. Grown-up ladies' panties, with the lace here and, and here. I didn't know there was so much blood in one person. Pure shining white. They say blood gets spilled in war, like an accident, nobody's fault. She said, you're a woman now. You could be a mother, too. Blood doesn't spill. It gushes. Fountains. Rivers. Good blood. Bad blood. Our blood. Their blood. It's all the same. No blood on their hands. That's what they all think. But everything's stained. Can you rewind and start over? If only. <laughs>